All right, so I just put a video up on YouTube that had the lecture for the Unit 2, which is how I uh, kind of explain Unit 2 with this setup right here. Um, and, and anybody can make this. In fact, I saw this. Anybody ever watch the TV show Breaking Bad? Did you ever see that? You saw that? Yeah. They had this cool coffee maker like in Season 3 or Season 4 that mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make. I saw it. I thought, man, that's cool. So I did a little research on YouTube, and they had a couple videos on how they did it. Uh, the one in the TV show had more bells and whistles. They had more tubes and beakers and things to make it, you know, to make it look Hollywood, make it look TV up. But uh, I bought this whole kit for a couple hundred bucks. Came with the stands. Uh, they had the whole kit actually already set up in a science company, uh, this lab company that sells all this equipment, uh, as a package deal. So uh, the, the glass came with it. I just had to heat up the glass and bend it. Uh, and then it actually broke a couple times, so I have some other uh, tubing that mixes in with it, but it actually makes it a little bit more flexible. So you're going to need a couple beakers, like this one here, holds a thousand milliliters. Uh, you're going to need a flask like this one here, and I got a stopper with a hole in the center, so the quarter inch uh, Pyrex tube can fit through it. And then they got one of these little devices here, which I'm going to place a filter over, and I'm actually going to double filter it. So these are just tea filters that I bought from the store. And uh, we're going to slide that over this glass piece here. And I'm actually going to double filter it because we're having problems with some of the, the coffee grains getting through the first one. So I'm going to try and, try and double filter it here without breaking anything. So first you put the filters on and then I'm going to put it in if it'll fit. Let's see if I can get it without breaking it in here. It's all delicate stuff. And then this stuff rips really easy, this, this little thin paper. Uh, let's see if we, I might not be able to get two on. So. I like to double do it though because the, the one doesn't work good enough. So, oh yeah, we'll get it. Alright, so I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to tie it off with a rubber band. Get it up here. Now, the longest thing is going to be the boiling of the water. Alright, so we got it on. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a band up in here and, and make sure that we don't get any of our, our coffee grounds. Coming up back through. Alright, I'm just going to maybe one more on this here. Alright, All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put it in the clamp here. Tighten it down. Alright, now we're going to put it in there. All right, so that you can see that. Now I'm just using the regular Green Mountain coffee that you use in the cake cups. Now I don't know if you ever opened one of these up, but I got to tell you, whoever came up with this coffee maker, they are uh, genius, genius. This coffee maker here makes every single cup taste exactly the same. It doesn't burn the coffee on the bottom, uh, but really all it is is a plastic filter with some coffee grounds in it and a filter like this one here. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use two of these, all right, two of these cups, and pour it in there like that and kind of even it out. And then I have uh, almost a pound of water, all right, which is almost 500 milliliters. 16.9 fluid ounces is five, about 500 milliliters, but I got a little bit less than that. All right, but we're going to go ahead and put it in the stopper and put the clamp on. Right. You've got to have a little bit of space here between the tube and the bottom so it doesn't doesn't create a vacuum. All right. And then I got my burner with butane. I, I did use a torch before uh, and I had this beaker that went with it but when I use the map gas torch and the glass it's Pyrex but and it's supposed to be able to withstand heat but the quick transfer from heat to cold uh, when I put the water in it cracked the glass so you have to be careful which is why you sitting in front are wearing goggles and why I'm wearing goggles as well. It doesn't really shatter but you never know what could go wrong. So I'm going to use this burner. The burner came with the kit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heat it up and, and fire it up. And uh, from your previous lesson in Unit 1, what's that water temperature got to get to to change state? 212. 212. Yep. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So once we get up to 212, all right, if it was at 32 degrees, you take 180 BTUs worth of heat to get up to 212. And then it's going to take another 970 BTUs, like matches, right? Each match is worth about one BTU to use something tangible. 
Uh, it's going to take 970 of those matches, so it's like I'm striking a bunch of matches. And then, oh, you can kind of see what's happening right here. You see what's happening? Yeah. Why is it going up? What's happening to all this water pressure? The heat does what to everything? It expands. Yeah, even before it boils, it's trying to expand the water. The volume of water as it heats up gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Everything, all fluids are kind of like that, where you heat it up, it gets bigger and bigger. And there's, there's these guys, there's like a couple Frenchmen, there's an Irishman, there's an Englishman. They all came up with all these laws. Boyle, Pascal, uh, Dalton, uh, and then Charles, right? All these guys here, these are scientists, they're physics, they're born long before any of you were ever even thought about. We're talking like 16, 17, 1800s. Uh, but these laws are some of the laws that we, we base a lot of our science off of. So there's going to be a law that I'm going to discuss with you on pressure and volume, and then pressure and temperature, and then they combine those two laws to make what's called the perfect gas equation. All right. So if some of you flipped through some of the, the pages in the book for unit two, you saw some of that. So yeah, it's starting to take it right now, and it's actually going up and over. And I'm going to go ahead and try and straighten this stuff out a little bit, get it, get it straight, and make sure that we can see what's happening with the camera. Now this will be quick. Once it starts to boil, this will happen very fast. This is a very rapid movement. I'm going to need my spoon here to try and mix it up a little bit. So. I don't have enough water yet. Okay, here comes the water. It's coming a little bit more. You can kind of see where it's bobbing a little bit up and down. Let me zoom in here for this part. I think we got everything in the shot. So again, the hardest part is getting the water up to the boiling point. Once it gets up to the boiling point, 970 BTUs, not much heat. It's going to take a real short amount of time to boil all that stuff to a gas. And I'm going to turn off the heat. And we're going to talk about what happens to the volume of the gas when I remove the heat, take away the temperature. Okay, so boom, we start to see some bubbles. That means that water now is starting to get saturated. Saturated meaning that we have both liquid and vapor present at the same time. So we are getting up to that 212 degree temperature. And uh, we're almost there. We're starting to see the little bubbles. And then it'll be a lot of bubbles real quick. It takes about four or five minutes, something like that, for this to happen. But like I said, once it really starts to go, i got to kind of watch the heat to, to remove the heat right away. But you can already see that this is rising down here a little bit. Got a little bit of water mixed in, and that's warm water. We're not quite 212 yet, but getting closer and closer. You see those convectional currents, the squirrels in the water, right? That's that hot fluid rising to the top and the cooler fluid moving down to the bottom. We talked about the three types of heat transfer, transfer conduction, convection, radiation. We really kind of have all three happening right here. That flame is touching. All of the heat rays from the flame are also radiant heat, as well as the convectional hot water and hot air underneath that beaker rising up and the cooler water falling down. And yeah, you can start to see some of the air bubbles moving around a little bit. And she's starting to drop a little faster, a little faster, a little faster, until the point, like you'll see right when we get to about here, it'll be quick. It'll go real quick. start to see it a little bit more dramatically here as it as it moves on to the next part. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to stir this up a little bit. Did you ever wonder how the coffee maker works, right? No? Works something like this. They take the water, they got a little heater coil instead of that. Look at that, that was quick! All in a matter of talking. Make sure we get all the water out. Get all that water out, suck it all out, boil it all off. Because even as I, it'll still push out because it'll change to a vapor water out, get it all out, all of it, boil it off. Same way the coffee maker works. Boils up the water, pushes it through a tube. Only difference is it runs it through some sort of filter. Alright, so that's it. 
Now I've turned the heat off. So we just took all that gas with the temperature and the volume and expanded it. And now that it's cooling back down, I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. Now that it's cooling back down, once it cools back down, check that out. It's magic, right? Ooh, string them doing magic. Look at that. It's like a siphon machine. You know what siphon is? Have you ever had to siphon water out of something? Where you have to take a garden hose and <laughs> suck the garden hose. And once you get the flow going, as long as the pre higher or lower, higher or lower helps. You can actually move water uphill with a siphon too. Because look, it had to go up and then down. Same way there. Boom. It's done. The siphon, once it started sucking that water back up, as long as the siphon isn't broken, it will continue to move all that water that's been percolated with the coffee back into the other beaker. So... That's it. That's it. That's, we're going to talk about these gas laws, and I'm going to explain them a little better to you. And hopefully through this demonstration, you'll have an understanding. But for right now, we are... We're serving coffee today, boys. <laughs> it's coffee time in HVAC. So we're going to treat this like an espresso, okay, where we have just a little bit for everybody. But I have some cream. I have some sugar. If you want to try it out, some of the grounds may have made it through, even doing the double filter, it kind of builds up some holes when I hit it with a spoon. So some of the grounds may have made it through. But uh, I got about four cups. Who wants a cup of coffee? Anybody? No, I had all the kids come up first class. All the kids came up the first class. Come around this way, grab a cup, the sugar. So that's it. This is the Arabica Cypher machine. All this stuff here was a couple hundred bucks. You might be able to find it cheaper. But uh, it's a pretty good lesson for the kids.